All right, good morning. Welcome back. I'm running just a couple minutes behind, but uh, all good here in the Atlanta area of the United States. Uh, if you're jumping on this morning, welcome to Digital Devotionals. My name's Andy, uh, pastor church here in the Kennesaw suburb area of Atlanta. Thrilled to be with you and um, great to have you here this morning. If you're streaming on Facebook, good morning. And if you're streaming on uh, YouTube, good morning. Come on, Roland family. We got people streaming from the police department already. Uh, Nikki uh, and David, you guys are amazing. I want you to know that. Um, guys, it's going to be a great day. A little rainy uh, here in our neck of the woods. Um, but uh, hopefully you got your coffee going. Maybe you've already uh, been rocking and rolling. Um, uh, Diana, good morning. I right here, um, I'm sporting my Cedar Point coffee mug this morning. And I think, I have said it like four times that I think that I, I don't have any coffee mugs left after this. I'm pretty sure this truly is my last one. We keep finding one, you know, one's buried in the cabinet, but this is my Cedar Point coffee mug. If you've ever been to Cedar Point, uh, it is an incredible uh, roller coaster park. And as an adrenaline junkie, uh, my wife and I had the, the pleasure to go and we went on the top thrill dragster uh, when, <laughs> when we went. And um, you know what? There's nothing like being shot over 400 feet into the air, higher than the Statue of Liberty, at 120 miles an hour. It is intense and uh, makes for a great coffee mug this morning. So here's what's happening, uh, guys. Whether you stream this later or whether you stream it now, um, we're going to start reading through the book of Mark each day. And I have been thus far kind of bouncing around a bit just as needed. And I will continue to depart from it if needed, if there's things culturally speaking that have to be addressed from a biblical worldview or a biblical perspective. Um, but one of the things that I always do when someone is new to faith or learning how to uh, put some of these things into play in their own life for themselves is I generally encourage them to start reading from the book of Mark in the Bible. Mark is written to people who didn't grow up, uh, well, they're Gentiles, right? It's not a Jewish audience. It's also only 16 chapters, which makes it kind of the Arnold Schwarzenegger action book of the Bible. It's like the Rambo, you know, it's the Rambo version. Give a little David Rowan love uh, with that reference. So it's quick, there's lots of action, and I'd love for us to just read through it. And here's what I mean by that. I don't mean I'm gonna read through it line by line. I mean. Each day, I'm going to just pull one thing out from uh, each of the different chapters. Uh, so today's chapter one, and I'm just going to pull one thing out from it. It's not comprehensive. It's just one thing that stands out to me. Um, so every morning, you can get your Bible. You can read it on your device. We're going to be in the book of Mark, literally for about the next 16 days. So with that, guys, here's what I'd love to do. Um, let's turn to Mark chapter one. And uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get cruising today. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Been praying for you, and uh, it's a good day. And I say that uh, with compassion. I know uh, if you're like me, you have days that aren't great right now. And you know what? Even in the midst of social distancing and sheltering in place and quarantine, even if that wasn't the case. You still have days and weeks and seasons that aren't great. Um, but sometimes one of the, the greatest things you can do is just, as my dad used to say, put on a fresh shirt, you know, get a fresh cup of coffee and, and tackle the day. You know, his mercies are new every single morning. And regardless of what your weekend has felt like, it was a little, little dicey over here at the King House this past weekend. But regardless of what your situation's like or looks like, here's the one by you to do. Get a, get a fresh cup of coffee, so to speak. Put on a fresh shirt, take a deep breath, and expect something new and great from God today. His mercies are new. Mark chapter 1, here we go. Uh, I am in verse 29, and uh, here's what the scriptures say. 
Jesus. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went into Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. This is Jesus and several of his disciples. Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. When evening came, after the sun had set, they brought to him all those who were sick and demon-possessed. The whole town was assembled at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. And he wouldn't permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And there's a lot in here. But I want to call attention to just two things today. And I had my pen out, was underlining things, you know, even in my Bible, fresh today. And that's this. Jesus has been preaching and he's been teaching. And he goes to Simon and Andrew's house and their mom is sick. Their mom is sick. She's literally laying in bed with a fever. And Jesus is moved by that. And he responds by going to her room, taking her by the hand, and raising her up. In other words, healing her. What is that? What did he do? We don't really know. Did he pray for her? Did he, you know, lay hands on her and drive out the fever in a charismatic fashion? I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. What we know, however, is that Jesus is moved to heal Simon and Andrew's mother who has a fever. And sometimes in the scriptures, you know, we see these huge things taking place where someone is raised from the dead. We see someone who's, you know, they're a life-threatening sickness, and maybe this fever is that. But we don't get the sense that that's, it has the same level of urgency maybe that some of the other things have had or are going to have in Jesus's ministry. We're not talking about someone possessed demonically here. We're talking about somebody with a fever. Uh, at that time and in that, in that time period, that was probably far more serious than it is now, some kind of infection. But I'm gripped by the reality that Jesus is moved by really big things as much as he's moved, or excuse me, he's moved by small things as much as he's moved by big things. In other words, the things that are going on in your life that sometimes that you don't want to bring to Jesus because you think they're insignificant or you don't want to bother him. That's a common thing I've heard uh, in, in ministry is, oh, I, I don't want to trouble the Lord with this as if my situation is too inconsequential to him. And it just simply isn't true. Jesus cares about the details of your life and the affairs of your life. And you need to hear that this morning. Whatever it is that you're going through, whether it's grand, whether it's huge, or or whether it's, you know, it's it's a fever, right? That you're just you're you're struggling with. You're not you're having a bad day, you're having a headache, you know, give it to God. Pray to him. Ask him to help you. Here's the other thing that I find interesting. You know, having well, Jesus goes on and he heals a lot of other people. But then we won't read all the, you know, the next next day he's out early in the morning when it's still dark and he's praying. And and all the townsfolk, they're, they're looking for him, right? It's like Beauty and the Beast with everybody looking for the beast, only, only they're not looking to pitchfork Jesus. <laughs> they're looking for him to do miracles. They want him to move powerfully on their behalf. They're, but the whole town is out searching. Right. And so Jesus, however, isn't moved in that situation. What he wants to do is he wants to move to the next town. And so I'm puzzled in the sense that puzzled isn't even the right word. There is this there is a tension in that we want to bring everything that we know and everything we have to God, the big and the little. And yet sometimes God moves in ways that we're asking him to. And then other times he does not. It doesn't mean that he doesn't care, and it doesn't mean that he isn't compassionate. But having had a dad that died prematurely, you know, I was very young when my dad died. I say very young. I was in my 20s, early 20s. I remember very vividly going to the hospital and praying for my dad. I remember laying hands on my dad. Even after my dad was pronounced dead, I was asking for God to do a miracle. I mean, I was, I was in faith. 
I was there, I was ready. And God did not move the way that I wanted him to, the way that I was hoping for him to. And it's easy to walk away in those moments and maybe begin to brew or to become bitter or angry. And I want to encourage you today with this. Um, this is going to appeal to your mind right now more than it is your heart. But if the God that we serve is big enough to be mad at and upset with because he hasn't eliminated all pain and suffering in the world, if he's big enough to be mad at because we ha he hasn't done that, and he also must be big enough to have reasons and purposes that are beyond our humanly comprehension, our human comprehension. I'm going to say that again. If God is big enough to be mad at because he hasn't eliminated pain and suffering, then surely he must also be big enough to have reasons and purposes that are bigger than our understanding. He must. Those two things must be, we, we, we have to hold those realities in the same place. And that doesn't comfort my heart when I'm in pain and when I'm in need, but it helps me as I'm processing things. I can't stand the, the you know, the, the isms, the Christian isms of, oh, they're all, they're, God has a reason, you know? It's not helpful in a time of pain. Uh, I wanna encourage you with that. Don't, don't say that to somebody that's in the middle of it. But when you're able to really settle in and have a cup of coffee with somebody, you know, and you're able to check in and, you know, you're able to have moments where you're processing through what's God doing and why God this, it's helpful to know and remember that the God that is both moved by big things and small things, it's, we still don't know always how God is going to move and when he's going to move, even though in his compassion, there's nothing that's too big or too small for him. Uh, in the same breath, I don't know why or how God always moves the way that he does. And he's bigger than most of the times I imagine him to be. And the God that's big enough to eliminate pain and suffering must also be big enough uh, to have different reasons and different purposes that are eternal, that are grand, that are far bigger than I can possibly imagine. Here's the good news if you've lost someone that you love. Here's what I want to remind you of today, that Jesus, when Jesus heals, <clears throat> whether it's this life or fully in the next, uh, it's complete. And there's no tears, there's no pain, there's no suffering. It's done. And if you've lost someone that you've that you loved and you've, you know, you've been holding on to the pain of you know, trying to just process this. You may have answers this side of heaven and you may not, but here's the good news. That faith in Jesus Christ, the promise of that is eternal life and that all pain and suffering is gone. And that's great news. The resurrection gives us great news today. All right, ladies and gents, uh, I'll leave you with that today. That was a lot. There's a bit of theology in there. But hey, that was Mark chapter one, little section there on Jesus healing Peter and Andrew's mom and the fever. Um, a couple of little things to think about uh, as you lead your day and live in faith, live for God. Uh, trust God today, pray to him, ask him to move. We don't always know why or when he's going to, but let's be in faith and let's ask him to move and do what only he can do. God's good, he loves you. I'll see you right here tomorrow at 7.30.